Brian Sullivan here, founder of Precise Selling, coming to you with your weekly motivational tip. Now, last week, um, I reached out. We talked about negotiation skills, and I was in Vegas. Today, we're talking presentation skills from Iowa. Nothing against Iowa, but it's not the Vegas Strip. Anyway, I'm going to give you five things that you must do in every group presentation. What do I mean by group presentation? Well, certainly you're doing presentations one-on-one, -on -one, or maybe you're doing a sales presentation in front of two or three people. But there are those days where you walk into a room and there's 15 people, there's 20 people. Hey, maybe you're speaking at one of your big national meetings and there's 500 people. These tips are going to make your presentation better than the four people who are coming in behind you. That's the goal. It's showtime, and these tips will help. Number one, the thing you have to think of is what is the objective of your presentation? Now, there's a difference between a great objective and a lame objective. A great presentation objective is what do you want the audience members to do as a result of your presentation? You see, it's not about what you are delivering to them. It's about what they do after and as a result of what you deliver to them. So if there is no action items or no expectation for them to do anything with what you're teaching them, why even present? So think about them first. Number two, think about it. We've all sat down in those chairs and said, all right, what is this guy going to tell me? What has she got up her sleeve? And, and, and there's a little bit of apathy. So I want, if you are using any PowerPoint all right, or Keynote, if you're Mac users, Think of your title slide. Don't make it boring, right? It has to create curiosity. So for example, maybe one of my seminars will be, or it would be this. The first title slide would be five steps to becoming your company's top sales performer in 20 days or less. All right. Now I know there's a bunch of folks in that audience saying, oh yeah, what is this? This is like seven minute abs. But you know what they do? They lean forward and they're curious. I'm okay with curiosity or skepticism. It means at least you're watching me. But then I only have about three minutes to capture your attention. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tell a story. So think about this. The next presentation you deliver, it's got to contain a story right off the bat. What is a story? It, maybe it's a sales presentation in front of a large group. Tell a story about how your solution, your product or your service did something amazing. And be specific. Who were the characters involved who, who won and benefited from that solution? Was it an older man? What did he look like? Was his face like this, right? Was there sort of a, a, a sassy, energetic fella? Act it out. You see, most presentations are fun when the, you could take the audience and put them right in the room of where that story occurred. Now, this is not easy. It takes practice, drilling, and rehearsing which means you got to do this on your own in front of the mirror, in front of your computer over and over. Is it worth it? Yeah, but only if you want to go away being known as the best presenter that day or if you're competing against three other uh, 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 folks trying to sell a similar product, the audience will remember this. Is there a risk? No. What do you have to lose? This isn't life or death stuff. Next, I want you to cut the number of slides you have in half. Not only cut the number of slides you have in half, but I want you to reduce the number of words on each one of those slides. People will react to images. Remember, we want them to look at the image, get a feel, and then watch you. The information is coming from your mouth, not from that slide. Do not rely on the slide. Frankly, when people turn their back and stare at the slides, it's because they haven't practiced their presentation enough, and you know what? You lost me. And then lastly, have fun. Again, most of what we're talking about isn't life and death. And if you could smile and be enthusiastic and the audience knows that you're authentic and you truly believe in what you're selling or presenting to them, they'll engage with you. Right? It's really hard to be a jerk uh, to the presenter when the presenter is having a blast. So those are five tips to you becoming famous in your industry, in your company, famous to your customers. If you want more information, go to PreciseSelling.com or link up with me, or follow me on Twitter at PreciseSelling.com. I can't wait to see your show.